Hi, my name is Steve Schultz, and this video will show you how FPZ calibrates safety valves. FPZ blowers are used in a lot of different applications, so make sure it's safe to use a safety valve in your application. Safety valves are considered critical accessories. Almost all FPZ blowers, apart from a few of our smallest models, require air to pass through the blower. If the system pressure increases, the blower will try to overcome whatever pressure it encounters. If a safety valve or other safety device is not properly installed, then the blower could exceed its rated pressure, which could result in a failure. Before you begin, make sure you have appropriate personal protection equipment, such as eye, ear, gloves, or any other safety equipment required by the plant or installation site. The first step in setting a valve is to determine the set point of the valve. This set point can generally be found in the identification tag of the blower. In this example, the maximum pressure of the blower is 121 inches of water and the maximum vacuum is 150 inches of water. Vacuum is designated by a negative pressure. Other units, such as millibar, may be used. If the pressure data is not listed, then contact FPZ with a serial number located on the identification tag. It should also be noted that these set points are based on standard air. Standard air means atmospheric pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury and an ambient temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. If the blower is installed outside of these conditions, contact FPZ for a corrected set point. Once we know the pressure to set the valve, we must determine if the safety valve has a proper spring installed. Different models use different springs. FPZ will generally ship the valve with a low pressure spring installed. Our VRL6 has a low pressure silver spring installed with a high pressure green spring shipped loose. The VRL8 is shipped with a larger low pressure silver colored spring installed and a medium pressure green colored spring shipped loose for mid range pressures. Both springs can be used for high pressure applications. The VRL9 uses a green colored spring for low pressure and a silver colored spring for medium pressure or both springs for high pressure applications. To determine the correct spring, refer to the safety valve operating instructions. The safety valve chart will list the pressure range for each spring combination. In our example, we are using the VRL8 3 inch safety valve. The silver spring has a minimum set point of 76 millibar or 1.1 psi and a maximum set point of 200 millibar or 2.9 psi. The green spring has a minimum set point of 200 millibar or 2.9 psi and a maximum set point of 400 millibar or 5.8 psi. For pressure above 5.8 psi, both springs are used. In our case, the set points are 121 inches of water for pressure or negative 150 inches of water for vacuum. We will convert inches of water to millibar by multiplying by 2.49, so we can use the spring selection chart. 121 inches of water is equal to 301 millibar, and 150 inches of water is equal to negative 374 millibar, so we will use the green spring. To change the spring, remove the plastic packing caps and confirm that the nut is installed on the small post. Make sure it is located on the side where the disc is located. Remove the bolts holding the cover to the housing. Unscrew the spring guide disc from the threaded post. It is easier to remove the spring guide disc if the spring is compressed. Remove the silver colored spring and replace it with the green colored spring. Using the spring guide disc, Compress the spring and screw the spring guide disc back onto the threaded post. Tighten down the disc about a quarter inch down the threaded post to ensure it is securely connected. Make sure that both ends of the spring are properly seated and that the guide post is properly aligned and the spring is decompressed. Install the cover and make sure the guide is properly aligned. The VRL6 has a guide cast into the side of the valve while the VRL8 and 9 use a dowel pin. Install the three bolts connecting the cover to the housing of the valve and remove the nut installed on the post and confirm that the spring is decompressed. The valve is now ready to be calibrated. Make sure you put on the appropriate safety equipment before you begin to calibrate the valve. The safety valve should be installed as close to the blower as possible. 
The arrow indicates the airflow direction and should be pointing toward the piping when calibrating for vacuum. Make sure the gauge is installed and that you have a method to throttle the blower. Slowly close the throttling mechanism, making sure that the blower doesn't exceed its rated vacuum. If the valve doesn't open when the maximum vacuum is reached, turn off the blower and make sure the proper spring and valve are being used. Once the valve is completely closed, all air will be passing through the safety valve. Begin to tighten the safety valve until the desired set point is reached. In this case, the target set point is 150 inches of water. Note that the air can be at a high velocity, so a firm grip is required. In some cases, it is easier to open the throttling valve, tighten the spring, and then close the valve and check the setting. Once the setting is reached, tighten the nut on the threaded post to lock the setting in place. Install the filter or screen. Open and close the valve to confirm the setting is correct. The valve is now calibrated and ready to use.